Danny Hay no longer the all whites coach. Didn't want to reapply for the job. Dennis Ketz Anos from, or former, head of football at Sky Sport joins us. Welcome back to the show, mate. G'day, Martin. How you doing, mate? Good to have you back on the airways, by the Thank way. Thank you and so I'm, much. Uh, really enjoying listening to you. Look, yeah, yeah, I, I no, you know, I'm, 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 I'm and, I, and I don't want to say it, it rhymes with mist and it starts with a P. I think that New Zealand football have got this completely wrong. I think it's an own goal that we have lost Danny Hayne. Yeah, oh, look, it's interesting, um, Martin. I've, I've got, to, got to put my hand up and say, look, I don't know all the, the ins and outs and all the parameters of of how the decisions uh been made. Like, look, if the criteria was plain and simple, um, I, I bet you my job, I'll get, get us to the World Cup in the cycle, and the guy didn't do it and someone wants to hold him to it, you know, then there's not, not much to, not much you can do about it. But in terms of my interactions with Danny over the years, you know, like he's he's a stand-up guy. Um, he's he, He'll tell you what he thinks, and I know for some people that could become across again a, a little bit polarising or a bit too confrontational, especially in the in the world we live in where we've got to say everything the, the right way and, you know, a, absolutely perfectly. But... Um, but in terms of uh, passion for the sport, having played at the elite level, um, being only the second New Zealander, like you, you go on Wikipedia and you look at the list of the all-whites uh, coaches, it's only two guys with the New Zealand flag next to their name, and that's Ricky Herbert and Danny. So I think that was a, a really big positive that you've got someone that's actually a Kiwi, um, come out of New Zealand, played at the elite level, and wants to come back and, and give something back to the sport. You know, there's a lot of our elite players, um, you know, and rightly or wrongly, they, they, they don't want to invest the time in it and, and give something back to sort of do their thing, uh, and, and off they go, which is, you know, that's that's fair. They can do whatever they want, but um, they're, they're all things that I really liked about them. Can, can Danny um, just be a, a little bit too straight up and, and in your face, and would it uh, would it work for everyone? Possibly not, you know, and, and to be honest, I don't know in terms of the, the playing group um, what the what the general vibe out of there was, but uh, like you, I've seen the articles of Chris, Chris Wood saying, hey, look, we should keep him, and he's another guy that's played at the elite level, so, um, you know, I've I wonder whether there's been some waiting of, okay, who are the who are the key players uh, that could get us forward? Who are the guys that have walked in his shoes at the elite level, and um, who are the guys that maybe didn't get as much game time, um, and are thinking, geez, if there's a change, you know, it might change my my international career path um, if this guy's not there, and, and you balance all that out. Um, but I'd have to say, thinking about you know what's happened in the past in New Zealand with Graham Henry and. You know, um, not doing so good at a rugby rugby World Cup, and and then you know being given another opportunity because uh, the organisation believes they're the right person to do it. Um, my gut feel is, uh, you know, if the team was happy, or the the players were happy, there's nothing, nothing um, untoward happening, uh, you know, behind the scenes that we're not privy to that this investigation's discovered. Then I would have given them another go for sure. Yeah, look, and that all makes absolute perfect sense. And you're talking about voices like Chris Wood, you're talking about Ryan Nelson, and you're talking about Ivan Vislich now. I don't know yep. three better voices in New Zealand football to listen to. You know, their 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 resumes, their credentials speak for themselves. When the All Whites captain, who to me is the single most important voice in the sport in the country, is Chris Wood, who's playing at the Premier League mm-hmm. level. He is the one guy to me that that carries all the weight. If he thinks this guy, and he's you know he's getting coached by the best coaches, he's playing in, in a league where the whole world wants to play in that league. If he believes in this guy, surely that says more than than I don't I, I, I don't know who else you can actually line up in a in an office and interview and say, oh no, well I actually actually am going with this guy rather than Chris Wood. I, I just it just makes no sense. And to be fair, Chris sort of strikes me as the sort of guy. If he didn't like something, um, he'd, he'd tell you, you know, like not 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 mean or whatever. He'd just go, look, hey Danny, I don't I don't think you, you you're right on this, or you should have done this, or. Um, but the bit the bit reading all the articles, man, the bit that sort of keeps coming back to me was the bit about um, the uh, alignment between the organisation and the All Whites. Mm. And I'm sitting there going, okay, well, hang on. Um, if Danny's job is to get the All Whites to the World Cup, and and he's he's again like you said, he's played with the Ryan's and the Ivans, um, Chris, you know Chris Woods, um, you know Chris Wood, pardon me, knows what to do. Then if the guy's saying to you, hey, I I don't think um, you know the community direction or whatever the direction that we're going in is quite right. I need to take the All Whites here to achieve the goals that you've set me. Um, then the guy's got to do it. You've got to be true to yourself. I, I don't know if you've ever been um, if you've ever been in one of those offices where. You know, one of the one of the leaders of the organisation comes up with something, and it's the stupidest idea in the oh, world. Yeah. And nobody says anything because they're all too too. You know, everybody's a bit too quiet, and nobody wants to say anything. Um, you know, and if the guys stood up and sort of gone, "Hey, look, um, look, philosophically or ideologically, these things are great, but you know, if I can get the all to the World Cup, then the 10, 12, 15 million US or whatever, however many US, you know, million US it is, 
could actually help us achieve some of those goals, but I need to zig and set a zag. Um, I'm okay with that. Yeah, you know, and I totally. just um, yeah, you know, but but it sounds like um, it sounds like well, well, reading we're not my interpretation of reading that is we wanted him to do this uh, to zig, and he decided to zag. Yeah, that's what it says to me. Kind of fits with us. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, but but you know, if, if the zag is justifiable and reasonable and it makes sense, and you sit there and it makes common sense, and it's not one of these emperor new clothes or we're doing this absolutely stupid campaign and then everybody's scratching their heads and can't understand why it failed. Um, yeah, you know, um, I don't know. I just, I just think, um, I'm not saying this of, uh, of any organisation in particular, but I just think sometimes we get caught up in the, you know, shiny, glitzy ideas as opposed to, you know, good old common sense. And, well, you know, this, this is the way to get, achieve the goals that we need to achieve. I think you're exactly right. Dennis Kitsanos with us, who is the former head of football at Sky and just been involved in the sport your whole life. And, and you know all of these people yeah. as well. Look, I mean, I've known Danny for years. Danny, um, Danny um, <clears throat> at Sacred Heart, of course, coached the kids. And, and you know, he was, a, and he was a, a, a form head as well for, the, for my boys and stuff. And so, and look, and I totally agree with you. He's not everyone's cup of tea and that he's a man's man. And if he don't like what well, he will yeah. tell you to your face. And look, I like, you know, personally, I like that. I'm not a person who can sit in an office and do a meeting for an hour. I got banned from meetings at my last workplace, NZ to me, because I wouldn't ask people how their weekends was. You know what I mean, Dennis? I didn't yeah. give a stuff. Yeah. It's not yeah. like I didn't care about you. It's just that we're here to do business. You do this, I do this. Give yeah. me the chores to do. I'm out of here. I don't want to sit for an hour. Yeah. And he's that kind of a person. And when you read all the gobbledygook around, you know, the press releases around this, you sit there and I've got my head in my hands going, this is just. This sounds to me like something New Zealand rugby would put out. It's just full of cliches and management speak and administrative this and that. The most important thing in New Zealand football, and get this, people, is our national team, the number one side. That's the men's team making the World Cup. There is nothing more important than that because from that, the rest of the sport survives. Without that, we're scratching around, trying to get money, begging here and going nowhere. That's the truth. Yep, no. Oh look, I I agree. The the you know the funding from you know there's there's broadcast money and and when I was at Sky there wasn't a lot of it you know um, floating around for football unfortunately and we used to try and push and push and push to you know help New Zealand football as much as we could. And this is me as a, a passionate football guy, you know um, lobbying uh, lobbying a management group to go hey look we should be doing this and you know not just the Chatham Cup final but we should do it in the quarter final you know we should do it from this round or you know so all those sorts of things. But but yeah if your your, your primary source is um, particularly in football, is your prize winnings, um, broadcast and commercial relationships. Now, again, commercial relationships, there's not a hell of a lot of money being brought into the game. I think uh, Hamish Miller, bless him, is one of the best in the business. I think was the last guy to bring in something in the millions for New Zealand football, but I, I, I could be corrected on that. Um, so, yeah, it is. That prize money is your pro- primary source of income. So that's, that's your main driver. And with all the wonderful things that we want to do, because I, I am a firm believer that, you know, that money is there for the game. So... If your community groups need a bit of help, if your women's football needs a bit of help, if your non-binary or whatever the right PC phrase is needs a bit of help to get, you know, then all that can actually start going into that. And the, the better and better we do, um, then again, then the commercial stuff comes and the broadcast comes and, you know, and some more prize money comes and, and you're away. Um, but, it's you know, it's, it's baby steps. It's basically what you do as a family, but on a, on a bigger scale. You go, OK, I might need a second job or I might need to achieve, get to here. And so we've got the, got the money to buy the new car or pay off the mortgage or whatever.